Throughout my life experience, I've distilled hacking possibility down to five main pillars. And you can use these five pillars. I've used them for many different things and it basically applies to anything. The five pillars are foundation, alignment, courage, expertise, and community. And when you combine and master those five things, you literally can accomplish the inaccomplishable. So with foundation, that's the starting point and the building block for everything that comes after. And for me, foundation is believing in magic and believing in possibility and not getting marred down and dragged down by logic. It's believing something bigger than yourselves because when you ask the universe for what you want, you have to understand that you're asking somebody, something, an entity. If you don't believe in magic, really, there's nothing that comes after that because you're going to find an excuse or a reason. You always find what you focus on. The second pillar is alignment. And it's so important to start as you intend to continue. But before you do, you have to pay attention to the labels that you've given yourself and you have to pay attention to the labels that society's given. And there's something that I call value currency. And everybody talks about, you know, currency being money and it is. But also pride is currency and integrity is currency and passion is currency and freedom is currency. And of all of those types of currency, money is actually the least valuable. So when you're able to tap into what your currency is, what happens is you get to the root of what is in alignment with you. If your parents are lawyers and you feel obligated to go to law school, but really what you want to do is paint, then paint. The third pillar is courage. And everybody mistakes what courage actually is because it's easy to look at somebody who's on a concert stage or somebody who's giving a talk or somebody who's running a seven figure business and say, man, I would love to do what they're doing, but I'm afraid I don't have their confidence. I don't have their skills. The thing to realize though, is that many of those people are just doing it afraid. Courage is not the absence of fear. Courage is just doing it while you're scared. Because when you do, and when you can get to the bottom of what's actually holding your back, your limiting beliefs and the stories that you told yourself when you're a kid, what happens is you're able to turn that fear into rocket fuel. But that doesn't mean you're doing it unafraid. It means you're finding the root of your fear and working through it so that you can be courageous. I always say people are not afraid of what they think they're afraid of. They're afraid of what fear is asking them to look at that they don't want to see. But when you're brave enough to be vulnerable and look at those hurty bits that are holding you back, what happens is you turn the intangible thing that, that, sh that fear that has no shape or conveniently is over there. So you can't touch it or fix it into something that is tangible, something that is tinkerable, something that you can mold or meld or action or execute on. And that literally is the difference between fear and courage. So the fourth pillar is expertise. So at this point you have foundation, you know, that there's something bigger yourself and we're, we're tuned into the fact that magic exists. You're in alignment with what's true for you. You're chasing the goal and you're starting as you intend to continue. Then you've turned your fear into rocket fuel and you're executing with courage. Then we arrive at expertise. This is the first time we're going to actually introduce logic because all of the other times we're leading with possibility. Logic is nothing more than a tool to execute on your possibility. So what that looks like is your tangible, executable, logical, tactical, practical tasks. And instead of looking at this barrage of skills, knowledge, and experience that you may have to obtain so that you can get to where you want to go. If you just break it down into pillars and break those pillars down into tasks or habits, all of a sudden the unfamiliar is able to become familiar. And then the intangible is able to become tangible. And a lot of people at this stage will get overwhelmed because it's kind of like a zip file. When you look at all the pieces and they're unzipped, it's easy to look at and say, well, I can't, I can't possibly execute on all those tasks. But when you zip them up into the smallest tasks or habits, then all of a sudden you're not overwhelmed. You know what every daily task needs to look like and who can't execute on a task or a habit day by day. But all of a sudden it's a grain of sand, a grain of sand, a grain of sand. And then you realize you're sitting in the middle of a beach that you've created. Your final pillar is community or support, as I like to say. And 
when I was that little girl and I was trying to become a firefighter, I would hang out with my girlfriends. And this big dream I had of becoming a firefighter was asinine to my friends. They were discovering beer and boys and they weren't interested in any of it. So every time I would say to them, yeah, no, firefighting. They're like, no, beer and boys. I'm like, no, firefighting. Every time I would have that conversation with them, I would feel further and further away from the possibility of achieving that. But what happened when instead I started reaching out to the people that were heading in the same direction as I was, those same dreams, those same conversations became commonplace. So instead of saying, well, I can't come out with you on the weekend because I have to work an overtime shift so I can take a rescue course and have my girlfriend say, well, that's crazy, the beer and boys, remember? The new people would say, well, of course you have to work the overtime shift and of course you have to take that course. And by the way, don't forget about this other course. So all of those feats and uh, habits that I was doing, all of a sudden they became commonplace and normal because everybody was up-leveling their game. Everybody was, you know, eye on the prize. Everybody was honing their skills and their habits so that they were able to achieve the same thing that I wanted to achieve. And then all of a sudden my big dream seemed normal.